Modem sees itself as a place of conversation. It's a place in which people can have good conversations. It's a place in which dialogue happens, in which people think as they go along and do different things. Human beings, uh, we feel, have a right to be able to talk to each other uh, about complicated and important things. And there's not that many places, for many of us, where you can do that. Uh, so it's a place to talk about complicated and important things, to float ideas, to be wrong, as, as often as we all feel like, and to do all that without the management listening in. Um, and that is something which we feel is in short supply in all areas of life, uh, including churches and church-related organisations. Modern conferences try to engage the emotions, the intellect, and practice. Um, and our activities today, uh, we hope, are, are planned to take us to all those three places and possibly a few others I didn't think of when I was writing that. Uh, we invite distinguished speakers to address us, and we have three today, distinguished speakers to address us. Uh, and they have things to say that we haven't thought of. They have things to say which refresh, refresh those parts of our brains that have gone a bit dead on us. Um, uh, and uh, we believe that probably all of us will feel um, some discomfort with some of the things that we say and that others of us say around the room. We certainly hope so, uh, that there will be times of discomfort for all of us and feeling a bit of risk. Um, the speakers who come and address us also move outside their comfort zones, and I believe that they come expecting to learn and, and to, to gain from the conversations too. So it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a learning community. That's a nice, someone should take, pick up that phrase. And write that <laughs> I think we live in times of disease, anxiety, and control in churches and elsewhere, uh, which are many people find quite frightening times. Um, and it's more important than ever that those of us who are in some way equipped to think about organisations and to think about uh, you know, churches and, and so on, uh, management and leadership in organisations, that, that, that those of us should actually be making a thoughtful contribution to how churches and organisations are run. This is crucial, urgent, and, and I, I think terribly important. Um, as I have a quote from Margaret Wheatley, uh, a well-known um, writer in the sort of emergence and complexity field of our own leadership, saying, I'm sad to report that in the past few years, Ever since uncertainty became our insistent 21st century companion, leadership has taken a great leap backwards to the familiar territory of command and control. Yeah, we're going backwards fast in many areas, and the sort of rise of fascism in many parts of the world is, I would suggest, also mirrored in the rise of... Um, it's not quite fascism, but it wouldn't mind being... Uh, in many parts of, of the, the church and the voluntary sector, um, of, of over-controlling behaviour. Uh, we have an anxiety about our churches, which is all the more poignant, because it's, I think it's very hard to see God as being anxious. <laughs> um, and yet, uh, we know that people have a bit of a tradition of recreating God in their own image. After all, he did it once to us, so it's our turn now. You know? <laughs> so, 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 so people are, are prone to recreating God in their own image. And that's what we're doing with anxiety, I suggest, at the moment. Is we're recreating an anxious God to go with our own anxiety. Um, uh, I, 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 I shudder to think what the consequences what might be if we then worship that idol that we've created. Um, now, um, I, I am an academic by background, and uh, early in my career, we came up on an occasion when we go on strike for more money uh, with, a, with a famous slogan, uh, which is um, there's on placards around the centre of London saying, rectify the anomaly, which is how, how academics come up with snappy phrases. Right? <laughs> So, 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 so I've, I've come up with a snappy phrase, I think, for today, which is embrace the emergent. Yeah. Like embrace the emergent. Um, so today's theme is transforming communities, power and powerlessness. 
Uh, the conference flyer, I think, is a great read, actually, it, 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 about how we, we tend to focus on deficit models rather than asset models and, and positivity. Um, and we spend, spend an awful lot of time talking about what we haven't got, what's lacking, uh, where is everybody, and why is everything so crap? None of which are necessarily very helpful lines. Um, and uh, uh, as against the alternative of an asset-based or abundance way of thinking about things, uh, talking about what we already have, and about the activity of God that we wish to join in with. Um, in the, 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 the structure of the, the day is, we, we're going to, well, you've got the structure of the day in the program, so, so I don't need to explain that, and apart from which I, I have a terrific record of getting that wrong if I ever try and do anything quite as, as, as propositional as that. Um, you, you know the structure of the day, but we're going to start uh, this, this afternoon. Um, Lucy Berry is going to be uh, using some poems to help us reflect on some of the things that we've been talking about this morning. And uh, Lucy, you're going to start off by telling us the poems so we can begin to uh, wash around the inside of our craniums, uh, I guess, uh, f f from an early stage. That's what happens next. Lucy, thank you. 